Hi, I'm Eric Cummings, Global Safety Manager of Ross Controls. The purpose of this video is to discuss common DM squared integration and troubleshooting issues that we run into with our customers. First, if proper operation of the valve is understood, then troubleshooting becomes much easier. The DM squared valve acts as a 3-2 normally closed valve. When pressure is supplied to the inlet and both of the main solenoids are energized, pressure will be supplied downstream. When it's de-energized, we're going to block the supply and exhaust the downstream pressure. Provided air pressure is supplied and both sides shift simultaneously, the valve will function just like a standard valve. However, if a fault occurs, with a fault being that one set of the internals does not operate simultaneously with the other, the valve will also block the supply and exhaust the downstream pressure and go into a latched out condition. The valve will remain latched out and will not function until the valve is reset. We can simulate a fault by removing an electrical signal to one of the main solenoids. We can fault on actuation. In this case, the valve is still energized, but we're in the faulted state. We have a feedback switch that indicates that we're in a faulted state. Our light went out. Once we reset the valve, we now have our light back indicating that we're in the proper running condition. The audible leak was the valve being in that latched out state. That also can cause a slight pressure drop within the valve, which will come up later on in this presentation. So in order to reset the valve, we have to maintain our supply pressure, we have to remove the main coil signals and momentarily energize the reset for 250 milliseconds or more. If the main coils are still energized, the valve will not reset with the reset signal. That's an anti-tie down feature, so we'll fault the valve and try to reset it while it's energized. The valve's energized. and will not reset until we remove the main coil signals and then it resets properly. So it's critical to have that supply, have no solenoid signals on the main solenoids, and to give a momentary reset followed by a momentary delay before you would re-energize the main coils. If we don't have a delay, you will also continue to be in a, a faulted condition. So I'm going to create a fault and then I'm going to try and reset the valve and re-energize it too quickly. So you have to have that slight delay after the reset, again about 250 milliseconds from removing that signal before giving the main energization signal. At this point, all the internals have shifted back to their home position and the audible leakage has stopped. The feedback switch indicates that we're in a ready to run position. Another common fault is the removal of the supply pressure while the valve is energized. When I resupply pressure, we're going to be in a faulted condition. And in fact, what has happened is that we've faulted both sides of the valve. And now we have an increased pressure drop within the valve. So our supply pressure is much lower than it was. That causes the valve not to reset because of that pressure drop. This is something that we see very common in the field. If quick disconnects are used that are too small, or elbows or fittings or undersized FRLs, the valve will be starved when we go into this condition where we've dropped the air while it's energized. If the valve will not reset and every other condition is met, typically it's an air supply issue. By removing this undersized line and supplying it with a full supply, the valve will reset properly. So again, the three main considerations when trying to reset the valve are going to be making sure that we have supply pressure, 
making sure that our coils, our main coils, are not energized, that we give a 250 millisecond reset signal, followed by a 250 millisecond delay. If at that point the valve will not reset, it's almost always a supply pressure issue. And when we say pressure, many people will say, oh, we have 60 PSI. Uh, however, you're going to have pressure drops, again, due to fittings, uh, quick connects, FRLs, anything that's in the line between where your, your main pressure supply is and the valve. So if you can't reset, it's probably due to a, an inadequate supply. If you feel you have an adequate supply and the valve still won't reset, of course, give us a call at 1-800-GET-ROSS. Thank you.